It's time for the Doug Garrison Show. This week, Doug talks about literacy with folks from the Peter White Library. The Seattle Chocolate Festival is coming up for chocolate lovers, and that's pretty much everybody. For those of you who love to read, we take a look at a book called Uper Bars. And the Scotty Allen Band performs tonight, and that's us. Stick around, the Doug Garrison Show starts now. Tell the host two minutes. Stand by live to tape. Lighting to show love, please. From front of house sound, PFL. Roll tape on masters, tell the places. Let's clear the set. Q John Music, open stage mics, standby effects, standby CG, standby to open up three, two. All right, folks, let's have a good show. Stand by, roll it in. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, and thanks for joining us here at Upfront and Company and at home on Charter Channel 12 and Fox UP. Well, we're in the dog days of winter now, or more appropriate here, the sled dog days of winter. Uh, but there's plenty of things to do. Uh, in fact, we have some ideas for you on tonight's show, and we're going to talk about some things uh, coming up in the area on next week's show as well. So if you keep tuned into the Doug Garrison Show, you'll find out plenty of opportunities for things to get you through these, these uh, short, cold winter days. Before we get to that, before we get to tonight's show, however, I want to reintroduce, uh, revisit uh, a segment that we brought up a couple weeks ago. It's called the Doug Face. This is where I make a face that represents an emotion I'm feeling about something. Uh, tonight's Doug Face is called Disappointed. And I'm not sure, we're still working on that face. Try to make a face. It's not that easy. But that's Disappointed. I'm disappointed uh, regarding something to do with our former governor, Governor Granholm. And it doesn't have anything to do with the, the time she spent in office. She was governor for eight years, two terms, uh, and it was a very unremarkable uh, uh, eight years. She, she didn't probably get a lot accomplished, but I don't blame her for that. She took office at the worst possible time to become governor of Michigan. Uh, she probably did the best she could. It was a, a difficult time. What I'm more disappointed in is what's going on now with Governor Granholm. You might know she's introducing a new TV show this week. Uh, it's on the current network, which is owned by uh, Al Gore. It's one of those uh, probably political news talk type networks, and that's what her show is going to be, a lot of talking heads discussing political and news issues of the day. What I'm disappointed in is the name of this show. It's called The War Room. Now, if I recall correctly, 10 or so years ago, back on September 11, 2001, uh, we were attacked by terrorists. We subsequently went to war in Iraq and subsequently went to war in Afghanistan. And if I recall correctly, we talked about the concept of, of not using war terms for non-war situations. Uh, we didn't want to equate the idea of our, our young people over in uh, the desert in the, in the east fighting these battles, risking their lives with things that we take for granted in everyday life. For example, a talk show. There's no way to equate the idea of war and people putting their lives on the line with a, a few pundits sitting around a table in a warm, dry television studio talking about the issues of the day. And I thought, if I recall correctly, we decided we weren't going to talk about things like a, a war room or talk about people having courage on a golf course when they hit a shot or things of that nature uh, because it would take away, it would diminish what was actually going out in the actual battles of war where people do actually show courage. So I'm disappointed in Governor Granholm and the, and the producers and her advisors who decided to call this the war room because it couldn't be anything further from war than sitting in that warm, dry studio. All right, that's my Doug face for tonight. Thank you. If you agree or disagree, if you have some thoughts, visit us on Facebook, share those thoughts with me, and we might share them with our audience. Okay, I said we've got a lot to get to tonight. We've got a neat show. We're going to learn about some things going on in the community, and we've got a neat band coming up. Uh, Scotty Allen is here later on with some friends. Uh, so stick around, and we're going to do some drinking. We'll be right back. Are you ready to make some music? Well, Jim's Music and Teaching Center is where it all starts. A great selection of instruments and the area's best music teachers make Jim's Music your one-stop music shop. Jim's Music has name brand instruments, new and used. Plus, they rent and repair, and they have everything you need for school band and orchestra. Jim's Music, locally owned and operated for more than 25 years, and now in four locations. Jim's Music and Teaching Center, where music makes you smarter. Thank you. 
All right. Okay, we've got another great crowd here at Upfront. Come down and join us sometime. We're here on Tuesday nights. So we have a good time. Okay, uh, I said we were going to do some drinking on tonight's show, and uh, with me are a couple ladies uh, to talk about reading and literacy, and uh, with me are Heather Steltonpole and Victoria Holly. Uh, ladies, let's enjoy our tea. We're drinking tea because I think that's appropriate to drink with these fine ladies. Yeah, how is it? I'm not a real big tea drinker myself. Very good. Mm. <laughs> Ah, very nice. Very refined and sophisticated. Well, let's get to it. Thanks for joining me. Uh, Heather, you're with the uh, Peter White Public Library. Uh, we've had uh, people from your fine organization on many times. We're glad you're here with us. You're the development director, and uh, this is your uh, midwinter storytelling festival. You're involved in that. Uh, tell me some of the events that, uh, that are uh, associated with that. Well, traditionally at the library, we've been having the Midwinter Storytelling Festival in February, and this year we're really excited. Our headlining act is Bill Harley. He's a two-time Grammy-winning artist. He sings, he's a storyteller, he's an author, and everybody will enjoy him. Yeah, you've got a couple programs for, for school kids that they'll, they're just scheduled to go to. Yes. Uh, but he's also going to do a show that's open to the public. Correct. Yeah. Um, he's coming February 10th and 11th. February 10th, all of the children in the elementary schools at MAPS are going to be bused to Kaufman for two separate shows for kindergarten through second grade, and then third and fourth will have a, their own show in the afternoon. And then Friday night at Forest Roberts Theater, we are going to have a ticketed event. Tickets are available at the Peter White Public Library, and that is an all-ages family concert that everybody is sure to enjoy. And then Saturday, we're having an author meet and greet, and Bill is going to do a storytelling workshop for anybody who's interested in telling a good story. Yeah, he sounds like he's really a great guy and kind of motivates young people to get interested and involved in reading. Is that kind of the point of this? I think he motivates people of all ages to get involved in reading and just telling a good story. As old as Kim, our floor director? Even or? that old. Uh, okay, I all think right. I so. Well, <laughs> we'll have to consider that. Just kidding. Uh, well, uh, speaking of uh, reading literacy, then Victoria, you're with us. You're a teacher you're teaching a developmental kindergarten at Vandenboom. But you are, uh, were the recipient of an award, the Michigan Reading Association's Literacy Award. Congratulations for that. Thank that you. tells me that, yeah, let's hear it for it. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, that was when you were teaching at Aspen Ridge. Yes. Uh, so you've got, uh, you have this motivation and you like to see young people read. Uh, it's something that comes from your heart, I'm sure. Tell us about how you got involved and, and what that means to you. Well, growing up, I've always had a competitive spirit, so I kind of look at teaching that way, too. My goal every year is to get my students to love reading and writing by the time they leave, and storytelling is one of the best ways to make that happen. And reading, my, my, what I know of reading is that, that it's just the key. I mean, if you can't read, you're not, you're not going anywhere. You're not getting anything done. Right, right. And with great readers and writers, once they learn that to love it, even if they're not great at it, if they love it and enjoy it, then everything else kind of falls in, into place. And it takes a special teacher, someone who it's from the heart, to, to motivate them and to, to learn, teach them how to enjoy reading. Right. It's kind of our job to find their niche. What is it that they like? What's going to motivate them to fall into it. So. Yeah, what, at what age do we find that kids really start to pick up reading? I mean, parents at home with young kids, what can they expect? And that that's varies from child Does to it? child. You know, it depends on where they are developmentally, of course, but parents and teachers alike, the earlier that you expose them to things like storytelling and talking about literature and what did you hear and why is this character doing this, and it, it's all little pieces that to the big puzzle. You keep talking about storytelling. So storytelling then is integral with reading. Absolutely. I think, I think it's more important than just reading because the students have to actually visualize the story in their minds with no, no backdrop, nothing to other, other than their imagination. If they can do that, then the, when they are reading, they learn to um, use all. I've always felt that storytelling was important in teaching people how to write as well because it's just it's just storytelling and, and writing the words down on paper but mm -hmm. it's all tied in with reading too. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, uh, Heather, again, let's remind people of, of, of uh, Bill Harley's appearance and where he's going to be and when so that they can set that time aside. The public can now buy their tickets for the family concert that will take place Friday, February 10th at Forest Roberts Theater. It's at 7 o'clock p.m. Tickets are on sale now at the Peter White Public Library. It's $10 for adults, $5 for children. There will be tickets available at the door, and they are a little bit more. I think they're $15 for adults, $7.50 for students. Mm -hmm. 
Um, the workshop the next day is free and open to the public for anybody who considers themselves a teacher, whether you are a professional teacher or you have children and you just want to learn how to work storytelling into your life. And um, Sounds like a lot there. of fun. Yeah, yes. this guy sounds good. You can get more information at the Peter White Public Library website. We're not going to put that address up there. Just Google, Google Peter White Public Library. You'll find it. It's kind of a complicated website. Ladies, thanks for joining us. Thank thanks you. for joining me with T. Thank and we'll have a good you. time with Bill Harley. <laughs> All right, thank you. We'll be right back, and we're going to do some more drinking uh, with the people from Sale. <laughs> Stay with us. Guess what? You can get any new or used car finance in the Marquette Community Federal Credit Union for 3.9% APR. New or used. Got your eye on this new Escalade? 3.9%. How about this 75 Gremlin? 3.9%. Looking at this stylish Dodge Dart? 3.9%. How about a new Chevy Cruze? 3.9%. RV, boat, tractor? 3.9%. What about this DeLorean time machine? 3.9%. 3.9% auto loans new and used at the Marquette Community Federal Credit Union. Stop in and apply today. Okay. All right. I told you we had some ideas about plenty of things going on. We've got another activity we're going to talk about here with Sarah Pira from SAIL, Superior Alliance for Independent Living. Sarah, thanks for joining us again. You've been here before. I have. I'm glad to be back. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Would you care to join me in a drink? Absolutely. We're going to have a little Gilbert's. I told you we were drinking tonight. We're going to have a little Gilbert's True Moo chocolate milk. And there's a reason for this, other than the fact that Sarah and I both said we love chocolate milk. You've got a chocolate festival coming up. I do. Tell us about it. Well, our chocolate festival is this Saturday at the upfront right here in the house. Right here. 11.30 uh, to 1.30. And we have 10 restaurants going to provide chocolate desserts, candies, anything chocolate. So if you love chocolate, you need to come out. Well, who doesn't love chocolate? Right. Now, Dr. Sorrell is with us tonight, the author of the SOS Diet Book. <laughs> but I'm sure he would make an exception for something at such a good cause. Tell us a little bit about SAIL and what you guys do there. Well, we're a nonprofit agency that help people with disabilities in our community. And we actually cover all 15 counties of the Upper Peninsula, so we travel a lot. But we're really just that one location for people, if they have a disability, to come and find out about resources or referrals and that sort of thing. Yeah, and you indicated you have a lot of people kind of already in your network that know about you, but people who have disabilities or know of people with disabilities that aren't familiar with your programs, they can contact you, visit your website, email, call, and, and get in on all the things that you do. Yep, and actually, you know, it's crazy. Like, you and I could tomorrow have a disability if we got in a car accident. So it's everybody. It's everybody yeah. that we see talk to it could be our parents grandparents so it's a it's a community concept yeah and yeah. you're always looking for volunteers always looking for volunteers or anything that we do we have a lot of activities to our spar program which is this chocolate festival is all the proceeds go towards it so anytime people want to volunteer to be part of that we'd be welcoming them with open arms yeah, and i would think you'd have a real good feeling after volunteering for something like that now an example of some of the activities uh, well, right now we're in a cross-country ski program, so we have an adaptive cross-country ski, so we have stand-up skiers, but we also have a sit-ski, so a lot of the stuff that we purchase with our monies that we get is equipment to so everybody can play, basically. Yeah. Um, so we also have bowling, we have a game night, a movie night, so it's a social thing on top of being yeah. a physical well-being thing. Sounds nice. Yep. Um, and obviously, in addition to volunteers, you're always looking for funding, and that's yes. the reason for things like the Chocolate Festival. Uh, why don't you tell me who's going to be represented at this festival? What types of goodies can we expect aside from Gilbert's chocolate milk? <laughs> That's right. Gilbert's is donating uh, 200 things of milk, 100 white chocolate mm. or white milk and 100 chocolate milk. Um, we got Gourmet Girl Cafe doing some bakery items. We have Donkers. The Marquette Food Co-op is doing their chocolate bars. Um, Sakely's, hopefully they're doing the chocolate fountain. We got DeRose Delights, Wallstrom, Sinfully Seductive Sweets. Here on Mountain Bakery and the Upfront, um, they are doing a chili chocolate barbecued pulled pork crostini. Their chef is wonderful here. So, yeah. um, then we also have Super One and Econo Foods donating some cakes. A, a lot of people that yeah. that we find contribute to a lot of these events in town. Certainly, you know, when when you listen, listen to these names, please patronize these businesses because they're doing great things for the community. Absolutely. Okay. Once again, a reminder: when and where and how people can. Show for up. yep, for at Upfront and Company uh, this Saturday. 
at uh, February 4th from 11.30 to 1.30. Tickets are $5 to get in, free for five and under. Um, and there's door prizes, a ton of door prizes, gift cards that we're giving away, a toothbrush from Dental Associates, which is kind of appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> and then also a lot of auction items that people can handmade quilts and bags and scarves. And, and you don't need you tickets in advance? Nope, you don't need tickets in advance. If you want them, you can call our office or go on, um, give us a call and we can send a you some. A great thing for a midday Saturday and you still got the rest of the day to do what else, you know, walk off go, or exactly. ski off that Go snowshoeing and go skiing <laughs> so you can get all that off. Okay, Sarah? <laughs> Thank okay, you. Let's head it. Awesome. Thank you very much. Sarah Pira from much. Sale <laughs> for the Chocolate Festival. Join them this Saturday right here. All right, when we come back, more drinking. Stick around. We'll be right back. The Doug Garrison Show is brought to you in part by Checker Transport, now booking weddings and special events for 2012. Visit CheckerTransport.com. And by Forsberg Flowers. Just as there's only one you, there's only one Forsberg Flowers. Ready for you as you plan the perfect Valentine's gift for the one you love. That's Forsberg Flowers. All right, the drinking continues. I said we had some tea with the ladies from the library. We had some chocolate milk with Sarah Pira. Now we're going to have... Some good old-fashioned Bud Light with my friends here, Randy and Kevin Cluck. Uh, gentlemen, thanks for joining me. Uh, these guys are a father-son team, uh, along with another one of the Cluck boys is here. They are the authors of the book, Uper Bars. And I'm not talking about a candy bar. We're talking about bars throughout the UP. Uh, gentlemen, thanks for joining me. I'm glad to have oh, you pleasure. on. Our pleasure. Uh, this is, uh, when I first saw this book, I said, what a great idea. I love it. Uh, what inspired you to write a book like this? Well, two things real quick. Uh, we feel that the bars, and we've done some research ourselves. Have you? It's painstaking, I know. Places like this. Somebody that, has to do it. That's yeah. it. A dirty job. <laughs> it is. Mike Rowe would be envious. Um, the, the food, the community center atmospheres, the entertainment up here, these bars in the UP are cooler than anything north of Key West. Yeah. And the up, other impetus was... Look, I, I graduated from college uh, uh, May 2010. I... Uh, didn't really have any job prospects, and I thought, you know, do what you love. That's what they always tell you. So yeah. I thought, what about bar hop for an entire summer and just write a book about it? <laughs> yeah. And, and drag my dad along with him. Uh, yeah. Well, I, I didn't really have to drag him along. He was <laughs> more than willing to come along the journey with me. Well, it, it's obviously a labor of love. You had to have a great time doing it. And I like what you said about the, the bars that we have up here. And, uh, and, and we talked a little bit about the cost of things, too. You know, you go, to, you go out in Detroit or Chicago, and you better have a lot of money with you. You, do, you can get away with a lot less money and enjoy yourself up here. We could spend more money in a day in Chicago than you could in a week up here and not have one-tenth of fun. Yeah. And we want people to realize that and get up here for a long weekend. Yep. Well, let me tell them about the book. This, these books feature, there's 109 bars featured in this, in, in this book. You didn't hit every bar in the UP. I think that's for volume two or volume three. Uh, but there's detailed uh, details in, of each bar in here, photos and stories about what goes on and the people that hang out in those places. Let me ask you this. Do you have a favorite? Did you have a favorite bar that you stopped in? Uh, out of the 109, we only had three we didn't like. Well, we won't it mention a, the three you was, didn't like. Well, it was... Uh, Stucco's in Marquette was very, very cool. We love Stucco's, uh, and, and Sonia was here. Uh, we, they run a great bar. You know, the thing about Stucco's is great service. And I think any bar, if, if you have great service, I mean, beer is kind of the same all over. But it's the people that work there and the patrons that you run into that make the bar what it is. It is. You're absolutely right. The craziest bar was the uh, gay bar up in Gay, Michigan. Well, you got to put the gay bar in o there. Only in the Not UP, that there's anything Doug. wrong with that. And we also mentioned the wooden nickel. This is where I picked up mine at the wooden nickel. Uh, how about some unique things? You're running anything that was really out of the ordinary? That human uh, in, in Rock, Michigan, there's a, a human foosball table behind the bar, so and, you can actually which bar take, is that? Herbs, Herbs and Rock. Uh -huh. Yeah, you can actually grab your friends, go back there, and, and get inside the cage and play a live game of foosball with your friends. <laughs> and that, that's the type of thing you're going to find in Rock. Okay. What about? I'll ask you this. What about chicks? Any one of the bars? Uh, anything stand out as far as? Because, you know, guys, we, we go to bars, we like to look at chicks. <laughs> huh? Anything stand out? Or, or hey, look, it, we, we did it hit a sore spot there? Or what? No, no. <laughs> our, my safe line, being married, is we've seen the best-looking women in the United States in Uper bars. Yeah. At close to 2 a.m., probably. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Hey, no, look, uh, Doug, we, 
we included a lot of pictures, a lot of the regular customers, and, and kind of the... I, the I saw that, yeah. So the, every bar you can flip through and kind of get a feel for, for what you're going to run into. Yep. You, you know what I think this is? I think this is a challenge. When I first saw this book, I said, that's not a book, that's a challenge. That means that we've got to go through this thing, and you've got it laid out geographically. Hey, we've got to start hitting these bars. And what I want to do is, I want to get the autograph of the bartender of every bar I stop in. How about that? Real quick, we're going to sponsor in June the first UP Bar Athlon. First person that gets a sign-off and spends $5 and 50 bars that are in the book wins 1000 bucks. Okay, and I want to have that person on this show then. We're going, to, <laughs> we're going to stay in touch with you. Let's let our people know how they can get a hold of this book. It's available on your website, which is uperbars.com. Also available on amazon.com. It's 1995. It's a thick book. It's worth it. It's got pictures, stories. You know, you know one thing about bars is you stop at a bar and you go, you know, do I want to go in there or not? This, this is your introduction. This gets you in. You know what you're dealing with before you go in. Could be the most important travel guide ever published. <laughs> I think it is. Oh. And you know what? We're not encouraging drinking and driving. Uh, we want to make sure that if you go out and have fun, that you, you watch yourself and you don't go out there and endanger yourself and others. But if you get a chance, folks, uh, pick up a copy of Uper Bars, go online or visit one of your favorite local pubs, and they might have it there. Uh, Revan, Randy, and Kevin, thank you very much for thank joining. You. Revan, Revan, and Revan. <laughs> All right. But, but Revan and Candy. The, the book, Uber Bars. All right. <laughs> Thanks for joining me. All right. Good luck with volume two. Okay. Coming up, Scotty Allen and friends. So don't go away. Restaurants. The trendier they are, the more they charge. At Big Boy, we don't chase the latest trend because we believe value never goes out of style. Whether you order from our menu or enjoy one of our hearty buffets, you'll discover that good food doesn't have to be overpriced. Imagine being able to afford to take your whole family out to dinner. It's not a trend, it's what we do at Big Boy. All right, tonight's music segment is brought to you by Jim's Music and Teaching Center, where music makes you smarter. Okay, uh, I'm done drinking for a while. It's time for some music. With me is Scotty Allen. Scotty, you've been on the show before. I have, yep. You were here, you were here with a band of a different name. Uh, yeah, we called it um, Scotty Allen, the Old Kiln Road Society. Yeah, and now we're, we've got a group called the Scotty Allen Band. Before we talk, in, introduce who's in the band tonight. All right, this is Mavis playing snare drum and hi-hat. And this is Bruce playing bass. Okay, and now this is just some of your musical friends. We put them together for the Scotty Allen Band. You've been doing a lot of traveling lately. Yes, I have. I just got back from um, L.A. where I played with the people on my album, Wrecking the Mess, which came out last October. Um, and I'm on my way to Duluth to record my second album with a lot of the people on the album and uh, play some shows there. And, and this has come out since the last time you were on the show. How can people get a hold of this? Uh, well, uh, Jim's Music is selling this. Yep. Uh, McDonald's Music. Um, here on Earth, Delhi is selling it. Um, Castle's Corner and Beaver Grove. Everyday Wines. Um, it's also on my website, which is scottyallen.com. Okay, and this is all original material, and it's all from you and your friends and associates. I'm sure it's great. The Scotty Allen Band. This is Wreck and the Mess. We've got the Scotty Allen Band with us tonight. I'll turn it over to you. Ladies and gentlemen, Scotty Allen. All right, thank you. This song is called Your Hero. Remember how when I was your hero Hurts there on the tip of your wing Never heard the words, but I heard your song or Something about our life live long Was it the summertime or does the seed unwind? The thoughts that flow right through my mind I picked you up, never to put you down Remember how when I was your hero Wind blows cool as our hearts are on fire The birds circle round singing like a choir The dust settles down as the haze moves in I pull you close and whisper once again Remember how when I was your hero Hurt 
birds there on the tip of your wing Never heard the words, but I heard your song A something about our life live long Was it a day like this, or does my mind start to slip? Walking by your side in the constant mist I picked you up, never to put you down Remember how when I was your hero Night gives in to the morning's light Another day coming, another gone from sight The sun rises high and it wakes everyone Lean back to back, I ask just for fun Remember how when I was your hero Perched there on the tip of your wing I never heard the words, but I heard your song Something about our life live long Is it a night like that or have I got it all wrong? Together now and forever on and on I picked you up never to put you down Remember how when I was your hero For moments like these I get all I need to know That smile on your face, slight touch to my wrist I hold you tight, you already know what I'll say Remember how when I was your hero I perched there on the tip of your wing Never heard the words, but I heard your song A something about our life live long A something about our life live long Thank you, you're a hero. When you buy a used car, it should come with a good dose of peace of mind. That's why at Riverside, our used car and trucks come with a two-year, up to 100,000 mile powertrain warranty. That's why we super inspect every vehicle. If you're tired of not finding what you want, try over 100 to choose from and another 600 a day away. And if you're worried about price, Riverside has some of the lowest prices in the state. And our low prices come with lots of extras. Selection, price, and warranty. Get it all at the new Riverside Marquette. The Doug Garrison Show is brought to you in part by Bell Hospital and Bell Rehab Services. Safely take the road to physical recovery with Bell Rehab Services. And by Iron Bay Computer and Design. Iron Bay gives you the quality and service you demand. Okay. All right. I want to thank our guests, uh, Heather Stelton Pohl and Victoria Holly with the uh, literacy program at the library. Sarah Pure was here from Sale promoting the Chocolate Festival this weekend right here at Upfront and Company. And we had uh, Randy and Kevin Cluck, authors of Uper Bars. Remember, you can get that at uperbars.com, a great book. And of course, Scotty Allen and the band. So let's get one more from Scotty Allen. Alright, thank you. This song is called Ain't Much. Ain't Much. But I'm all you got and I'm yours ain't much But I'm all you got and going nowhere ain't much But I'm all you got and I'm yours You're the creek, I'm the crank, you're the void, I'm the crack You're the hook, I'm the rack, you're the brook, I'm the bridge You're the air, I'm the pump, you're the thump in my heart ain't much But it's all for you I'm the ditch, you're the shovel, I'm the tree, you're the axe, I'm the ball, you're the hitch, belt, notch, latch, buckles up, you're the drunk in my booze, ain't much, but it's all for you, ain't much, but I'm all you got and I'm yours, ain't much, but I'm all you got and going nowhere, ain't much, but I'm all you got and I'm yours. Like a sunflower growing on the side of the road Standing proud, no place to go You're the hand that reaches from the truck And picks me ain't much, but it's all for you I may be late, I'm a wreck, I'm a mess Standing undone on your front steps Working stems in my hands from a lady Ain't much, but it's all for you Ain't much But I'm all you got and I'm yours Ain't much But I'm all you got and going nowhere Ain't much But I'm all you got and I'm yours Thank you.